So, here with Rowan Brill from New South Wales DPI at Wagga as research and development agronomist. So, just um, involved in some um, canola trials, a new project we've got going on canola agronomy, so optimised canola profitability. So, one of the big things we're seeing is growers swinging towards early sowing of canola and also um, in this sort of system, southern New South Wales, a big domination of canola and cereals in the rotation. So, we've got a fairly high demand on on putting nitrogen out as well through the bag as people say so as your either urea or ammonium sulfate or whichever product uh, suits the system so in these trials here that we're looking at behind us we've got canola variety by nitrogen rate and nitrogen timing comparisons so we're looking at essentially there's three hybrids and three ops in the trials so um the hybrids sort of become a bit more popular in the region um, and also there are a couple of triazine tolerant varieties in there as well so there's hybrid triazine tolerant and also open pollinator triazine tolerant varieties so just one of them we've got here is one of the um, one of the hybrid lines and just a bit of a response to the nitrogen that we can see in the paddock so this paddock uh, is about 50 kilos of the hectare of available N at sowing so fairly well on the low side after a after about the last 15 years of continuous cereal and canola rotation and quite responsive to nitrogen. So we can see coming from the the plant there, I've pulled out of the, the nil end treatment plot um, and dry matters have been taken on that when flowering started and we're around that two and a half tonne of the hectare of biomass. And we're moving up here to about 20 kilos of nitrogen put on, that's all that's sowing as urea are applied underneath the canola row. And you see we pick up fairly well and there's a big there's a big return on the investment for just that first 20 kilos of N so that the first hit of N gives you the biggest bang for the buck I suppose and we picked up there or just even another ton of the hectare of dry matter just straight away from that 20 kilos of N so in that case that's sort of around that 45 kilos urea um, pick up again to about 40 kilos of N and then up the two at the end there are both 80 kilos of nitrogen but one one with um, 80 kilos up front and one with 40 kilos up front followed by 40 kilos at about the eight leaf stage. And as far as the dry matter goes, it, there doesn't seem to be a lot of difference in the in those two this year, but there was good follow-up rain. So I think that that response to that later treatment would be fairly dependent on, um, on how much rain there was following application. And so we've gone from at the left there, the, um, the low end treatment being only about two and a half ton of the hectare of dry matter up to this 80 kilos of nitrogen treatment being well well above five tonne of the hectare of dry matter. So so quite responsive at this site. Um, so one component of it is looking at to see if the if the hybrid varieties should be managed much differently than than the open pollinated varieties that we've generally grown in this region. Um, but what we've found is that there's a strong genotype response to um, in these trials. So we get strong differences between the varieties and hybrids generally yielding a bit more than the open pollinators. We also get strong responses to nitrogen, but we tend not to get a lot of interaction between that variety and the nitrogen fertilizer input. So they tend to track the same. So it's really just budgeting your nitrogen based on how much nitrogen is in the soil and how much moisture is in the soil when you're making your nitrogen decisions. And then how, what's your potential rainfall, I suppose. So, and then what's your attitude to risk is one of the big things. So the growers with the high input rotations are obviously going to need more in their system.